I invite people to check out the Maya protocol right now. You know, it's it's live and it's you know it's it's managing millions of, of dollars every day. It feels like the right direction to go into, right? Like it's great to use DEXs to swap tokens within your own blockchain, but then as soon as you have to want to go to another blockchain, then it still feels like we're going back in the past and we have to go through centralized exchange or through bridges where if the bridge gets hacked, your wallet, if your assets, even the other change may get affected. What's up, Beta Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're going to be sitting down with Marvin Burton, the founder of Maestro, as well as Alex, the co-founder of the Maya Protocol, which is aiming to bring bridges swaps into Cardano. That said, let's go ahead and bring up the guests for today, and we're going to jump into everything that the Maya Protocol has to offer. But then we're also going to touch on two proposals, which are being spearheaded by the Maya team, as well as the Maestro team. First and foremost, we've got Marvin from Maestro. Marvin? Second time that I'm seeing you here today. How are you doing? Doing great. Yes. Good to see you again. Likewise, I'm ready to jump into not only what Maestro is doing, but the interoperability that Maya, uh, the Maya protocol is also aiming to bring into Cardano. Next, we've got Alux representing the Maya protocol. Welcome aboard. How are you? Hey, guys. Excellent. Thank you for having us. Looking forward. It's my pleasure. Um, I saw a post about a month or so back where Maestro had kind of shouted out, you know, what Maya was doing. And immediately, you know, it got my interest. I tried to do a little bit of digging around it, try to better understand the protocol. And I'm happy to have the both of you here to help not only expound my understanding, but also introduce this platform to the greater Cardano community. So let's kick things off with just brief introductions. I think we'll maybe turn it over to Marvin to introduce himself as well as Maestro. And then we'll go over to Alux to kind of talk a little bit more about um, his role in what the My Protocol is offering. Yes, so uh, I'm Marvin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Maestro. So Maestro is a, a leading infrastructure provider for the Cardano ecosystem. So you can think of it as like a, a platform all-in-one for uh, developers to be able to build the application uh, easy, more easily, but also for established projects to scale the application. So in a sense, we provide you know um, high-performance APIs and developer tools that allows you to really build basically anything on Cardano, right? From wallets to DEXs, lending protocols, blockchain DEXs, but also like we work with bridges. And in this case now with Alux, we're gonna work with um, kind of like interoperability and bringing new innovative ways to connect, you know, Cardano to other ecosystem and potentially, you know, bring more capital injections and more users into, into our ecosystem. I appreciate the introduction. For anybody who's just hearing about Maestro for the very first time, go ahead and check out the description down below. I'll leave the links to their existing Catalyst proposals, as well as how to get in touch with the platform and join their community. Alex, over to you. You know, what are you doing here with the Maya protocol and what exactly is Maya in a nutshell? Yeah, well, uh, I'm the co-founder of Maya. And uh, yeah, Maya is essentially a cross-chain DEX. So think cross-chain Uniswap where Uniswap lives within uh, Ethereum for assets within Ethereum. Maya allows that, that kind of pool swaps all that between assets of different chains. We're actually a friendly fork of ThorChain. That's where we emerge from. And we dedicate ourselves to adding more chains that ThorChain doesn't have. And this includes Cardano. We've always dreamt about the integration with Cardano. And uh, Maestro is helping us make that a reality. This is also like my third or fourth time seeing Marvin here this week. So always very nice. And uh, yeah, let's let's kick it off. Thank you both for the introductions there. Um, I've been seeing a lot of Marvin as well. He's been making his way around town, really spreading the gospel about Maestro, what they're building, and then also their proposals. So I think that's really going to be what the core focus of today's video is, right? Touching on the proposals again the Maya protocol and Maestro collaborating together to include Cardano in this network for bridgeless swaps, which is the Maya protocol. Now, before we dive into the actual proposals themselves, this is a question I think for Alex, do you mind kind of just breaking down, you know, the process from A to B, 
when somebody's looking to utilize the Maya protocol to, for example, take their Cardano or excuse me, their Bitcoin, which is on the Bitcoin network and move that over into the Cardano ecosystem. Can you break down how that works again from the beginning to the validators and then to the actual receiving of those assets on Cardano? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, first off, uh, if you have BTC on Bitcoin network, you don't really need to have or coin called Kakao or anything whatsoever. You don't even need to have a special wallet or be using a special tool from Maya. All you need to do is be able to send that Bitcoin with uh, arbitrary data on, on the memo, which in the case of uh, Bitcoin is a OP return field. Uh, what you do is just send the Bitcoin to one of the vaults controlled by or Maya nodes. Uh, Thorchain today has around 100 nodes. We're working up towards that. Right now we're around 25. And uh, yeah, we have uh, th these nodes are over collateralized and they control together a threshold signature scheme vault on Bitcoin, where you send your Bitcoin to with a memo essentially saying swap to ADA to this address of mine, please. And uh, the nodes observe that, uh, change the state over on my node behind the scenes, calculate the exchange rate according to the pools as any other AMM would. and simply send over the ADA from the vault they control on ADA as well with the TSS there and send it to your address. And all of this happens in just a few minutes. So uh, it really just is a quick swap. And uh, it really is very simple, but in order to kind of abstract away this process of knowing which address to send the funds to and what to write in the memo field and all of that, uh, and kind of for you to have visibility about the exchange rate more easily, without having to go to a end, an endpoint or something. There's usually a, a user interfaces or wallets or UIs that help abstract this process away. And essentially it just looks like, uh, you know, I, I have this, I want this, you'll get this much, you know, click accept and that's it. Uh, so we have several of these UIs in our ecosystem and growing, counting. And actually many of lis the listeners here today probably are users also of Trust Wallet. It's, you know, this, the, the biggest open source wallet there is. And you will see there that you can actually swap Bitcoin to ETH and you'll see, you know, this is a wallet. How can they do that? You know, it's my keys, it's my coins. How, how can they allow for me to swap? Well, actually, when you swap there, you're using Thorchain in the background, uh, the technology we're forked from. So uh, pretty neat. And essentially, we're bringing ADA to this kind of space and ecosystem. So uh, for you, the end user, it will actually be quite simple to do. And it will just start coming to the UIs they're already used to use in Cardano. It can potentially come to your ROI, you know, wallet or other wallets you guys have already out of the box. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we're essentially a tool for Cardano and developers in Cardano to allow for these swaps to happen to the users very easily. Uh, so, you know, it's not that daunting as it might sound now. <laughs> I've got so many things I want to follow up with, but let's take it step by step. I want to yeah. quickly recap what you mentioned. And then again, there's questions about nodes. And mm -hmm. then there's also questions about integrations as well that I want to ask. So from, from my understanding, right, this is a way to quickly swap from one native chain to a separate native chain without actually utilizing um, any sort of bridged or wrapped assets. I want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. The next thing I want to jump into it's just going to be the difference for anybody who's hearing about this, right, between a decentralized way of doing this versus a centralized way of doing this. I spoke with Marvin earlier, you know, about some additional proposals that they're working on. And one of the things that I think the community is used to is going through some sort of centralized entity to make these native swaps happen. So my first question is, do you mind explaining, you know, the benefit of doing this in a decentralized way, as opposed to mm -hmm. incorporating something like Coinbase or Binance when it comes to these native chain swaps? Sure, so the first and more clear benefit is your keys, your coins. So uh, you start with your crypto in your chain under your wallet. And when you move over to this new chain, it also ends up in your custody. So this never using this kind of middleman of custody uh, it's it's huge because you never know when you'll add you know your stuff to Binance and they'll have a meltdown and you'll be waiting for two years uh, to even get a send back you know so that's kind of the first thing um, the the second thing is uh, yeah it's just it can and will be getting very competitive with central exchanges 
Uh, we're already seeing Torchain competing with the biggest exchanges in many of the routes. So uh, even price-wise, it's getting to be very, very competitive. And also, if you count the time that it would take you to onboard your funds to the central exchange and then uh, to perform the, the trade in the central exchange, and then we're throwing that to your address again, if you count that whole trip, it, it's also way faster to do it with us because uh, it's just you know it's just more direct. So uh, yeah, I would say that you you require no trust in these kind of third party. Uh, you require also no KYC, uh, no stuff like that. Uh, you can uh, you know it's just better in many ways. And at the end of the day, it just applies or kind of it's under the philosophy of what crypto was built for in the first place, right? Peer to peer cash. And, and you know your self custody, so it's just one of the core tenets of of the blockchain industry that I think we've gotten far away from with all of these kind of central exchanges. That I think we need to come back again to the you know to square one on this. I think for me personally, just the fact that I wouldn't have to KYC is probably enough for me to be onboarded. On top of that, as you mentioned, trustless list permissionlessness in just um, speed of the actual transactions compared to some of these centralized exchanges. So thank you for breaking that down. Now, pivoting back to one of the points that you mentioned earlier, you highlighted these nodes and these faults. Does mm -hmm. this integration with Cardano also present a new opportunity for Cardano community members to become node or vault operators? Or is this somewhat of a sort of closed loop of um, federated, you know, operators that the Maya protocol has kind of set out? Can you kind of break down, you know, yeah. how these validators and these node operators work? Every step of Maya protocol is open source and permissionless. So there's no kind of closed federation, closed club of who can or cannot become a node. Uh, it's actually completely anonymous and KYC less also to become a node. Uh, most of our node operators actually operate with bare metal infrastructure, even not even cloud. As, uh, what it entails is not only running a node for Maya, but is running full nodes or daemons on every single chain we support. So out of our 35 current nodes, we would have all 35 of them, each running a full node on Cardano, uh, actively observing the chain state. So it's really heavy to run a Maya node and it's actually costly, but it's also, uh, since they get a share of the swap fees, it, it, it's also very profitable. Now, uh, the way it works is uh, nodes compete by bonding collateral and the highest collaterals being posted are the ones that are allowed into the node set every time there's a churn. A churn happens every three or five days. So this turns is just a cycling of the vaults. There's a proof of solvency because a new vault is created with a new party of new nodes. Most of them are the same as before. Let's say if you have 25, 20 are the same as before and you know five were kicked out and seven were allowed in, depending on whether we're expanding or shrinking the network. And all the funds are transferred. So not, not only can you see transparently on chain that we really have everything we claim to have, but we claim we, we can show that it's completely solvent every few days, which is for me amazing. Uh, now, uh, in, in this process, if you were the highest bonded node that posted the highest collateral, you're allowed into the set and you'll remain there for as long as you don't actively tell the network you want to leave, which is something a node operator can do. Uh, or uh, every, every churn, the lowest performing node will be kicked out. The lowest bond node will be kicked out, the one with the lowest collateral and the one with the oldest one as well. So we always kind of have this continuous cycling. Uh, this also gives us a chance to update the, the network. So actually also if you have a, a node that hasn't adopted the newest version that 67% or more of the validators have already adopted, uh, during a turn you will be kicked out. So you always have to be kind of present, updating at the top of your game. Uh, if not, you'll just uh, be kicked out sooner and you know forego all the potential upside of the fee revenue you would get. Thank you for that. I think the transparency with respect to liquidity is huge. I can definitely get behind that. And that's actually going to lead me into my next question before I think we can kind of jump into the proposals. So there's liquidity pools involved with the actual Maya protocol. You know, can you maybe talk about how that liquidity comes to be, um, who's in charge and who can contribute to that liquidity pool or to those liquidity pools mm -hmm. um, again? 
Uh, all, all LPs, again, will be a recurring theme. It's completely permissionless. Uh, anybody can add LP as much as they want to any of the pools we support. All the pools are paired with Cacao, which is our native asset. Uh, Cacao is essentially kind of a, a medium of exchange for everything. It sets the rate for what, what, what should be the Bitcoin to ADA exchange rate. Well, what is the Bitcoin to Cacao and then the Cacao to ADA. But you don't see that as a user. You just say, I have Bitcoin, I want ADA, everything will happen behind the kitchen. It's not a two-step process. Now, uh, Cacao, or it, the token is fixed supply. It's all circulating already. Uh, it's a very, it's a very solid token uh, uh, that protects value, so you don't, you know, uh, suffer permanent loss and stuff like that. So uh, it's a, it's a solid token that has its value based on the TVR we have, which is great. Uh, but uh, yeah, helping is very simple. You just add both sites. <laughs> you have Bitcoin, you have Cacao, you add both of them, or you have Ada, you have Cacao, you add both of them, and you also get a share of the fees. And that's it. You can add and withdraw any time. There are no lockups. There are no periods of anything. If you like uh, what no operators bond uh, or post as collateral is LP units. So you got an extra kick to your LP. You can delegate it to a, a bond provider, a node operator, and get some uh, more share of the rewards. But uh, yeah, again, it's all just a very healthy system. Anybody can contribute, uh, and it requires no permissions whatsoever. Thank you for and, that. And so. if, if I can add something to this, yeah. Um, so in a sense, there are multiple ways to earn fees, right? And you have different categories. So the first entry level is you become an LP, just like any DEX, and you provide liquidity to a pool, and you can earn fee that ways. But then if you want to earn more fees, then you can, on top of that, make your liquidity bonded to a node provider, which in a sense, for Cardano people, it's more like staking, right? You, you use that as collateral. So then you take a bit on more risk, but then you also take on more higher fees you take a high proportion of the of the swap fees and the third category is now to become yourself a node operator where you're running all these nodes and infrastructure and in that case you get even larger percentage of the fees so and at each case right it's either more financial risk or more technical knowledge or more operational cost but it kind of like different people can like participate and earn fees at different levels and i think there's also a fourth category that is not live yet is with like savers which maybe Alus can talk a little about, about but it's it's sure, a bit less fees than LPs, but even less risk. Yeah, uh, the, the savers is essentially you add just ADA, you don't pair it with anything. You add ADA to the vault, and you get ADA on ADA uh, fees uh, returns. Now the returns are much lower uh, since you also have less risk and kind of you're being guaranteed by the network to get back your ADA plus any return you got. So um, if you don't want to get exposed to other assets and you just exclusively want kind of uh, to keep increasing your ADA game, then you, uh, you can do that. Now, it, it will be to be seen whether that Savers product, especially, especially in Cardano, can compete with staking. Uh, I know staking is around 4 or 5%. LPing will be higher, but Savers might be below that. So it might not be that much of a competitive product to be seen. Maybe we have a lot of volume. It can be quite interesting, but it's something to be seen. Typically, the serious product is very interesting in UTXO chains that uh, I know you are EUTXO, but in normal UTXO chains that don't have any staking uh, uh, whatsoever, that's a very competitive product and uh, very popular. So I think Bitcoin Dash, all of those. Yeah, Marvin took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, it seems like so many different ways to earn with the Maya protocol. And that's really only half the equation, right? If you take a look at the value that it's providing, bringing extra liquidity, more eyeballs, more adoption to Cardano, I think that is actually the, the biggest thing for me personally. So not only do we get that, but there's also, as you guys just mentioned, four different ways to join the Maya protocol and also earn while bringing Cardano to the masses. So I think that's a really good segue into the actual Catalyst proposals. So Marvin and I did speak a little bit um, earlier but do you guys mind highlighting, you know, there's two separate proposals. Number one, why two separate proposals? And then maybe just diving into either one that you guys want to focus on first, and then we'll close out with the second one. I think you're muted there, Mike. Marvin. Yes. Yeah, I'll give you a quick overview and Alus, you can compliment. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, two proposals because it's quite an ambitious uh, 
uh, amount of, of work um, to develop and also to deploy, as you can imagine. Um, and we felt it felt in kind of two different categories. So the first bit is really around upgrading the code, the protocol itself, to just be compatible with Cardano primitives. And so that's going into deep into the internal mechanisms of how uh, the protocol works and then doing some kind of quite significant upgrade that would just make it compatible to Cardano um, and then be able to audit that and get it vetted and make sure that um, it's secure um, and, and reliable. Um, and so obviously all of this is going to be open source and the whole the whole Maya protocol code base is, is already open source. Um, and the second step is how do we launch that, right? So Maya is an ongoing process, right? They are constantly um, processing transactions. And so there is also a lot of work around deploying this into a test net, safe environment, and kind of stress test it in a way that convinces us that um, we, we, the, there's no issues, but also giving some time to other node providers, um, operators to add a full Cardano node within their own operations, right? So it's dependent on everyone in the network to uh, to 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 deploy their own Cardano node and maybe and Maestro can help you know really onboard people and get them um, facilitate that transition um, and then doing the liquidity bootstrapping which is seeding the pools with initial liquidity so that fees are not too high um, and to kind of allow kind of the initial momentum to, to come through so there's just a lot of different pieces that some are technical and some are operational uh, that needs to come together for all of this to 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 be successful. Yeah. Typic, typic, you know, so we are kind of summarizing what Marvin said or saying it in another way. Uh, we have to get first the technical part out of the way, which would be first the signing algorithm. We need to get EDSA right. EDSA is big work done thankfully by Torchain for Solana, else that would be a, kind of, it's a hefty project uh, that also needs to be audited on its own and stuff. Then we go over and start programming the Bifrost. And the Bifrost is this that you showed now that's constantly observing and signing transactions on the target chain, in this case, Cardano. We test it first in a mock environment that we're kind of simulating everything. Uh, then we do something that's a smoke test, which automatically simulates and generates over 100 transactions, making sure everything works. Then something called stage tests, where we, have, we actually today have a second Maya chain that's kind of, we agree it's fake, but it's not. It's like the same code. Uh, but it just doesn't have any liquidity because we agree it's not the real deal. But it connects to real Bitcoin. It connects to real ETH. It, it, it would, in this case, connect to it ADA so we can actually perform real swaps with the real code in a real uh, you know, network with different nodes, uh, which is very close to reality and the mainnet behavior. After that, uh, there's this kind of syncing process that Marvin mentions when we have to help uh, all, our, all our validators to you know, rent, run their own full node and infrastructure. They might have some performance issues. They might have some connection issues. Over time, there's also this issue where uh, you can't always sync from the genesis if you want to be practical. So there's different snapshots being taken of the chain state uh, where people can sync from. And those have to be maintained somewhere. We will get help from ISO for that. Also, there are backups. You usually want to have everything backed up every, every once in a while. So that in case there's some issue, you have kind of this also checkpoint to start from uh, with information from Bifrost and all of that. Uh, and now we're ready. We're ready to launch. Uh, but there's also two parallel tracks, which is how do we get a lot of liquidity? And then how do we get a lot of visibility? Uh, which means having all our UIs and wallets that we currently have integrate ADA. And then also go to wallets that already exist in Cardano and have them integrate Maya. Uh, so it's kind of both sides of the family, you know, uh, and, uh, and doing all of the marketing for that because this requires launching and doing more interviews and stuff like that. And on the liquidity side, we need to make the pool deep. We need to make sure it has a lot of funds uh, because the, the deeper it is, the more affordable it is. Uh, and this is where what Marvin says, we have to get help to see the liquidity seriously at the beginning so that it starts the snowball effect. Uh, it starts, you know, uh, if you go and find a pool with like twenty thousand dollars on it, you'll be very suspicious, and you you won't know whether you know how good is it, how interesting it is. Uh, but if you have uh, these big institutions or the Cardano Foundation investing and saying, "Look, we believe in this project. We're seeing this with two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars of cacao and ADA. 
great, that starts a snowball effect. And we've seen this snowball effect happen already on Dash, where the uh, Dash Investment Foundation uh, uh, seeded the pool. Uh, they actually did it a bit later because they had come there at DAO, so they had uh, a bit of kind of process to do it. The first month before they invested, we were like at $100,000. We wouldn't, it was very difficult to get above that. Uh, and as soon as the investment foundation showed like the good faith and said like, we're ready, here it is. And they invested, I think, uh, yeah, like $100,000 or so. Uh, we saw that balloon and now we're like at $800,000 in the pool. Uh, Dash is smaller than ADA. We do expect uh, more liquidity on ADA, but uh, we have to start somewhere. So uh, that's kind of like a, a quick summary of our experience there. Uh, and in all of these process, you can get involved. You guys, the audience, uh, it's all open. It's all happening in front of your eyes. You can contribute to the code. You can contribute to liquidity. You can, if you have your, you run a, your own wallet or UI, you can do that. If you're a user of a UI, you can tell them that you're interested. Hey guys, you should get Maya when it's online. And you should write them now because we're all preparing. It, it will take months. So we need to st start doing the job now. So uh, this is just an open invitation to get involved. Yeah, anybody can contribute. Great summary from the both of you. Um, it just sounds like in, in terms of the order of the scope moving forward, number one is testnet, then obviously getting the product live on mainnet, then reaching out to other projects, kind of spreading the word, not only internally on Cardano, but also externally on other networks. That way they can begin to bridge from their own respective networks into Cardano. And then last but not least, making sure that there's enough liquidity to facilitate and to build trust in the community to actually utilize something like the Maya protocol. Now that all sounds really great, right? But I have to ask this huge question. How long will all of this take to integrate? If it's funded, you know, how long will it take until we can actually see Maya Live, including Cardano on the mainnet? Uh, for me, the, uh, I'm not sure what date uh, we put in the proposal. I, I don't remember with with like exact details, but provided that this, the signing algorithm, the EDSA is developed, which Torchin is already actively working on. We typically take two to three months for an integration. All of these that I just mentioned. Um, Cardano, let's say, perhaps we face issues with the EUTXO uh, and how different it is from UTXO. By the way, uh, you know, <laughs> we're applying for the grant to get kind of more support and rally the troops and kind of do this faster. But we, we want to do the integration anyway. Like, we're not contingent on the grant to work on this. Uh, so I'm actually already half a dev research in UTXO. Uh, it seems there are some differences that might be uh, uh, causing trouble, but uh, if there's nothing too special, again, uh, two to three months, worst case scenario, four to six months. Uh, so that's that's what we're going to try uh, and see how it goes. Now, it's, it's not kind of me going like this. We, we've done it in the past. We've launched Dash. We've launched Kujira. Now we're launching Arbitrum. This is after having already Bitcoin, ETH, and Thorchain itself, which we are we, we are also integrated Thorchain. Because by the way, I haven't mentioned this, but Maya supports Thorchain itself. We have a Rune Cacao pool. So through that pool, ADA can also access all of the liquidity and all of the assets that Thorchain supports. Um, and user interfaces do this seamless. So uh, just pretty neat detail to mention. But we also did that integration. So we've overall have three integrations already shipped. And uh, the fourth one, Arbitrum, should be ready in the next few weeks. So uh, this is not, not our first rodeo. And uh, obviously, we've gotten a bit better and more efficient every time. Uh, Cardano is a bigger lift, but it, it's not a kind of like see you on 2025 thing. It's, this is short term. That's Marvin, very anything great. you'd like to add? No, perfect. I think I have full confidence in the Maya team. Uh, like I would say, this is not their first rodeo. They, they've done this for many changes, and they've really proven they're, that they're capable to deliver, deliver fast. And the code base itself is battle-tested, right? Um, although they've, they've launched recently, it's, it's a fork of Torchain, and Torchain has been battle-tested over the years. It's currently, you know, swapping, I think, billions of dollars every month. Um, and uh, it's doing this really well. So uh, both, I think, the code base has you know a lot of lot of uh, proof proof to, to that it's successful, and the Maya uh, Maya protocol team is also really competent. So uh, yeah, I think we we plan this to launch as quickly as possible, and uh, Maestro will do its best to like make sure that we don't hit any hiccups on the on the Cardano side. 
Yeah. Uh, something I could add, perhaps, is that the dev team on Maya didn't get any tokens at launch. We started with nothing, no pre-mine, no allocation, absolutely nothing. We instead get a, get paid a, a percentage of the fees. Uh, 10% goes to something called the Maya form that distributes to Maya token holders, which is a separate token for kind of the dev team and investors and stuff like that. And we've urged up some, but that was kind of its main purpose to help fund this project. So why I think this is important is because the, our, real, uh, our, our real benefit in all of this is getting that volume, is getting those swaps, is getting the Maya Cardano integration everywhere uh, because we earn a share of all the volume that happens. Uh, real yield, everything, right? Uh, so it's a very fair way for us to get compensated, but this also means that we have the interest to have these integrations shipped as long as, as as fast as possible and as successful as possible, because that's what kind of uh, uh, you know gives gives us uh, or or day to day bread. So uh, it's just something very important that the dev team interests are aligned with what works more most for the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, if we ship fast, if we have a successful and big launch, if we have a lot of volume, it's exactly what's good for the Cardano ecosystem and it's exactly what we're incentivized to do. Yeah, I, I really like, again, how all this is coming into alignment. Not only is the Maya team happy, right? You guys have an additional source to get revenue from. The Cardano community is happy. We get the exposure. And then again, there's multiple ways to also earn along in the process. I commend you guys as well for your commitment to delivering, regardless of whether or not you guys get funded through Catalyst. Um, and I think the collaboration with Maestro, who's one of the best here in this space doing this, uh, will definitely prove to be fruitful in, in, in the coming months. So I'm looking forward to that. I think there's one other thing I want to jump into, and then I'll turn it over to the both of you guys for closing thoughts. I think one of the biggest things that we've heard with respect to bridges, which again, I understand that my is not a bridge protocol. You guys are providing native swaps without a bridge is security. So do you mind maybe just kind of highlighting the security features that Maya has in place to make sure that, you know, when a user actually utilizes the Maya protocol, that they can feel safe, number one, mm -hmm. that they're actually going to receive what they're expecting to on the other chain. But the number mm -hmm. two, if they liquidity provider that, you know, when they go to sleep at night, that they're not going to wake up and all of a sudden find that some of the vaults have been drained. Yeah. Well, f first off, big disclaimer, this is still Web3. Uh, this I, I like to believe you know, crypto before it was like the wild west. We're no longer there, but we're kind of building towards more maturity. So definitely, uh, I always say this, and especially when we were launching, uh, that you know, do your own research. Uh, be very careful every time. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Even if I'm the co-founder, and I'm telling you that we have to all kind of cool down. <laughs> That's the first part. That's a caveat. But that said, Marvin mentioned it very well. We're using battle-tested code. Fortune has been around since 2021. They had their share of security issues, which they solved. Uh, everybody was made whole. Everything, everything was okay. But this gave them a lot of learnings that we inherited into our code. Uh, these are kind of, uh, for instance, there's something called the solvency. Uh, what's the solvency checker? Uh, the nodes are always constantly measuring two things. How much of ADA do they believe they have? according to Maya node kind of or, or blockchain, but also how much do they actually have when they observe the wallet uh, of Cardano in the Cardano blockchain? Essentially, how much does Cardano say you have and how much does Maya say you have? And if they are different by even just 1%, everything stops. There's some, some issue somewhere. It might be a fluke, it might be nothing, but it might be some exploitation attempt. And that gives everybody the ecosystem time to see what's going on and fix it, patch it, whatever it needs. That's one thing. Another thing, for instance, is the outbound delay. The larger a transaction is, the more, uh, the, the longer it will take to settle. So if you're swapping, you know, ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, that will happen in, you know, any, anywhere between two minutes or twenty minutes, something like that. But if you're swapping one million dollars, hold on a second, this might be uh, uh, something wrong and an exploit being, you know, abused. So uh, again, this uh, gives a kind of a cooling period where the node operators, where the dead team, where the community can all raise their hand and say, hey, hold on, guys, let's chill it here. There's, there might be something going on. Uh, like these two examples, there are many, many other things that happen in the background that are in the code uh, that help us protect against all of these things. I mean, invariants that are constantly being checked uh, and, uh, yeah, just everything being monitored. 
So uh, yeah, definitely uh, it's one of the core things that we need to you know work on. The Bifrost for Cardano would be audited. Maya itself has been audited for everything we've done differently than Thorchain. Thorchain has been audited multiple times. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we do the best we can on that and, you know, uh, work, <laughs> work all the time towards security. Thank uh, you. Maya, since it's launched, hasn't had any such issues. By the way, Perfect. we launched in March 2023. Uh, we manage right now around $40 million in TVL. And so far, so good. Perfect. And I wish you all the best in that regard. Again, I know, especially Thank as you. the platform gets bigger, that paints a bigger target on your guys' back for people to come in there and actually try to extract liquidity. So on that end, I mean, I've learned quite a bit here. Um, Alex, thank you. Marvin, thank you. Um, I'll turn it over to the both of you guys for closing thoughts, whether it's regarding Maya, Maestro, or just your guys' joint collaboration with these two proposals. Go ahead, Marvin. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I invite people to check out the Maya protocol by now. You know, it's it's live and it's you know it's it's managing millions of, of dollars every day. Uh, it's I've used it and I it's really incredible that you can you know, swap natively between blockchain and it feels like the right direction to go into, right? Like it's great to use DEXs to swap tokens within your own blockchain, but then as soon as you have to want to go to another blockchain then it still feels like we're going back in the past and we have to go through centralized exchange or through bridges where if the bridge gets hacked, your wallet, if your assets, even the other change may get affected. Um, so yeah, just um, the best way to, you know, to earn, earn people's trust and, and, and gain people um, adoption is really for, for you guys to try it and, and give it a spin. And, um, and you will see that it will be a great for, for Cardano, but also for other people outside to uh, enter the Cardano ecosystem and, and see what's going on, all the great stuff that we're doing. I think there's a lot of new DeFi on Cardano that a lot of people are not aware of. And this is one way to uh, get other communities curious about what we're doing um, and, uh, and and contribute in, in any way. Thank you for the awesome closing thoughts there. Um, Alex, over to you. Well, I can say that I'm just excited. I'm excited for this integration. I've been talking about it ever since I uh, started Maya. I love Cardano. I'm a fellow staker. Uh, um, I really love the idea of, of having Cardano come to more people. I think many people have slept on what you guys are doing, and uh, I'll just very I'll, I'll be very proud to to be the heartbringer of this of this uh, integration. And uh, yeah, just excitement every every time. Uh, thanks to Marvin again, as always. Uh, you you guys have been great and have been pushing us forward, and we wouldn't be so far in this process without you guys. But every time I feel closer. And every time I feel closer, I just I'm more happy and excited about this. So that's all I wanted to communicate. And definitely follow us, uh, you know, MayaProtocol.com. You can find us on, on Twitter too. We have a Discord server. There's a lot to talk about there. There's a Cardano channel, you know, Discord. You can comment there how much you are looking forward to this integration. And uh, yeah, uh, every Monday we have an update to our community. One is with Maya. It's Monday morning. Also, if you want to keep up with us, what we're doing, what the dev team are thinking, what we're working on, what the problems are, what's coming, uh, you can join there. And, you know, we, we pride ourselves in transparency and it goes from even the way we develop and communicate with our community. So uh, welcome to Maya, guys. Thank you for having us. Welcome to Cardano. You're not the only one that's extremely happy. Um, I'm fired up to get this live here on the main net for Cardano. I think this year is hopefully going to be the year for interoperability where we can really have Cardano branch out and interact with some of these other networks where there's just been so much going on. Um, I'm again excited to have the both of you on here, Alux and Marvin. Um, I'll go ahead and leave the links to the the proposal that you guys are both collaborating on, as well as the official links for the Maya protocol and Maestro down below for you guys here watching today's video. As always, if you guys found any portion of today's video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that thumbs up. It really does make a difference here on the channel. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you want more content like this surrounding Cardano and all the builders aiming to come in and provide value to the ecosystem, consider subscribing to the channel. And last but not least, if you have any questions for Alux, or Marvin or myself surrounding Maya, their um, proposals, or just Maestro, then please make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.